dialogue between any two of the four speaking roles in this. Yeah, once the initial fun of it is over, you'll kind of realize you're stuck with a one-trick pony. All four girls are very hot, and any excuse is used to pan up and down their legs, ass, breasts, which their skimpy outfits help show off nicely. Holding down Z allows you to strafe. It works as target lock. It makes you walk instead of run. It centers the camera and it unlocks new moves not accessible if you don't hold it down. Unfortunately, this also means that it will sometimes not do the target lock even though you really want and need it to. Other than using that to reset the camera, all you can really do about the camera is turn it to the left or right using minus and plus buttons. And these are so slow that you'll never use them. But the reset camera almost makes up for it. Although if you switch sides and then reset the camera, you'll lose the target lock. And scrolling through targets takes a lot of time and there's only one button to do that. So you can only go in one direction. Holding it down also enables you to evade using the A button. If you press the A button without said held down, if you evade at the exact right time, just as the enemy is attacking, you'll be prompted to turn the Wiimote around like that. And if you do so, you'll do a counterattack. Target lock is also rather helpful when you're using the gun because the bullets will really hit and the aiming reticle will be locked on whatever you're locked on. Oh, also, Aya can throw knives. Manual is absolutely tiny, probably the most minimalist manual I've ever seen. It almost doesn't tell you anything, but the game does direct you on how to play when you start off story mode. The music has some fast electric guitar and some of it is techno. It's okay. It really didn't get my adrenaline going. And basically, if you want that to happen in this game, you have to make the effort. There's a ton of blood and gore. One plus about this game is that it is very easy to get into. There's very little you have to keep track of, and if you put the Wiimote nunchuck in the hands of a friend of yours who has played at least some other Wii games, he will immediately be playing it and doing fairly well. The higher a combo of hitting and or killing enemies, the better the orb that will come out of them when they die will be. Unfortunately, once they are all dead, you have to run around and pick up all the orbs. And the orbs don't materialize until the enemy is all the way dead, so you have to stand there and wait if you want to pick it up immediately. You can taunt enemies and they'll come at you more, and killing them will also get you a better orb. This only allows one profile, so once you've started playing it, do not press new game, because it'll overwrite it. The game never wants you to be bored. You can skip any story segment that isn't gameplay, like there's this scrolling text. I think the lines are spoken in Japanese, I guess, but it's written in English. And the same goes for conversations. Spoken in Japanese, subtitles in English. You can fast forward through the scrolling text. You can skip any dialogue. The loading screen itself allows you to chop it into pieces if you're bored waiting for it to load, which never actually takes very long. The graphics are fine enough. The city and such look towards being photorealistic, which kind of contrasts uncomfortably with the stylized designs of the four main characters, and nothing looks downright bad in this. The AI is decent, but honestly, I came upon zombie birds that fly in place, and sometimes a boss would attack a corner or turn towards a corner and not realize I was behind them for at least a little while. And I mean, this happened several times. While this does go pretty fast, including in the sword fights, and it is pretty smooth to go from one sword fight move to another sword fight move, 
it is still sort of slow at times. I think it might just be to make sure that we can perceive it, you know? That it doesn't go so fast that we don't even realize what just happened consciously. You know, maybe our mind perceives it but can't quite translate it just yet. And it is among the smoothest sword fighting experiences I've had in a video game. I would still say that any Prince of Persia game other than Prince of Persia 3D still does it better. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Put put that down. Don't throw anything at me. Okay, I won't mention Prince of Persia again in this video. The areas tend to be pretty small, but they can support a very large number of zombies. It's not uncommon to run into 50 or more in a single area. Some of them are just there, others come up from the ground, sort of like medieval. To give you an idea of how many enemies you do fight in this, in maybe a single storyline, you can kill about a thousand. You can beat this in about a single day. Your shoulders will punish you dearly for it, but you probably could. Once you've beaten one storyline mode, you'll unlock view mode, where you can see, hear, and rotate the camera around any character in the game. Including enemies, as far as I can tell. To fight Mudmen as the other three characters, i.e. not Saki, you basically have to keep attacking them until you rampage, and then you can kill them. At least, that's how I had to do it. The game says that you can just do the hand thrust as the other three, and grab their organ, pull out of them, killing them, never worked for me. Other than maybe once or twice, by accident. There is zero environment interaction in this. The sound is okay. Honestly, if you want a really great beat-em-up game for the Wii that doesn't get to be repetitive, is just as gratuitously over-the-top violent and gory as this, go for Mad World. It has better music, you feel more like you're actually the one doing the fighting instead of just a spectator who can't control anything other than the timing and the overall direction that your blows go. It sets a mood and maintains it. It doesn't have as many hot babes as this, and while this never tries to apologize for itself for its content, Mad World for some reason does. But overall, Mad World is definitely the better game. If you are interested in this, do yourself a favor, rent. Don't buy. And if you do play just a little bit of this and it doesn't immediately turn you off, try Saki's wrestling moves. They're awesome. And I'm not even a wrestling fan, and I'm still not. Anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of Onechanbara Bikini Zombie Slayers.